today we're going to talk about business ethics and social responsibility. Let's start by talking about what ethics is actually. So for a definition, uh, ethics are basically the moral principles that guide uh, an individual's decision making or kind of behaviors that we observe. So let's pick an issue that it's in principle somewhat non-controversial. Let's start with stealing. Uh, in a lot of cultures uh, and for most individuals, stealing is actually considered to be unethical. So if you ask in a simple questionnaire to most people what they think about stealing, will they actually do it? Most people will tell you no. Right? Now, there are different schools uh, that uh, discuss ethics and there are very different ways in which these moral principles are actually laid out. I'm going to discuss two of them. One is the deontological ethics school and the other one is the teleological ethics school. So if you look at the deontological school of ethics, the idea is that actions are inherently good or bad. So there's a clear line in the sand. It's either white or black. And there are not a lot of in-betweens, in fact. There are no gray areas. So that's the ontology. Stealing, it's wrong. And that's it. End of the story. No two ways about it. Teleological ethics is different. It considers the motive as potentially being good or bad, but not the action itself. So why are you doing what you're doing? Right? If the motive or the underlying reason for it is considered to be moral or good, then the action is good. So in the case of stealing, why are you stealing? Are you stealing because you cannot feed your family and you just need to get some food so that your kids don't starve to death? If you actually are in a situation like this and you ask the same people that just told you that stealing is wrong, whether uh, they will change their mind about that if the motives are uh, to basically maintain a family. Uh, a lot of people will change their mind and they will move from maybe uh, close to 100% of people saying no, they do not actually think stealing is okay, to maybe 50 or 60% of the people saying that in case that you need to you know, satisfy some basic need, then still it might actually be okay. So here you have a list uh, of different industries because in our case, we're not going to talk about ethics in general. We're talking about uh, business ethics, right? We are interested in what the implications of ethics are for business decision making. And as you can see, different industries are seen differently uh, from an ethical standpoint by consumers. So here you have technology at the top and financial services at the bottom. And by the way, there are some industries that are not considered here that will actually score lower than financial services, in particular media and, and, and governmental facilities or government. And they will score even lower than that. So technology companies here are seen as the most trustworthy of all, with uh, over 70% of the people on average for that industry saying that technology companies are actually trustworthy. This will include companies such as Apple or Google, Microsoft, etc. And at the bottom, we have financial services. And as you can see, there is quite a discrepancy in terms of the trust that people have in the ethical behavior of these companies. And financial services barely scores over 50%. That means a lot of people are not trusting banks and financial institutions, which is not surprising, especially this data is from 2018 after some of the dealings that we have seen in the early and in the early part of the 2000s with the financial crisis, Lehman Brothers, etc. So then what is business ethics? We have discussed what individual ethics is. And business ethics are the moral principles that guide the decisions made by businesses. And of course, businesses are run by people, so they are intertwined to some degree. And so personal ethics are important because the decision making within businesses is going to be carried out by people, but the business itself is going to have its own guiding principles and, and spreading those to the, through their employees is going to be an important aspect that is going to be laid out using uh, things like training and having a code of ethics, which we will discuss uh, soon. So what's acceptable and, and good within the organization? 
it's going to be a function of its culture. It's going to be a function of who its stakeholders are, customers, suppliers, etc., and what they consider to be acceptable. If you have a lot of pushback from customers regarding some of your products, you might actually have to rethink or rewrite your code of ethics. And you can see this with some of the uh, green initiatives that are taking actually place right now in many companies as a result from a lot of pushback by customers. Uh, and at the end of the day, what's going to be uh, making also a key difference is who the individuals that are actually working in the business are. So the personal ethics are actually part of the mix. And like I was saying before, they are intertwined. It's not just the organization. The organization doesn't make decisions. It's the individuals that actually work for the organization. So at the end of the day, it comes down to culture, the culture in the organization. So how can we actually uh, improve the culture of the organization? We're going to talk about key tools for that, which is the code of ethics. But organizations can actually go beyond just making ethical decisions, which is just considering what's good and what's bad. They can actually try to exert social responsibility. So social responsibilities try to maximize the positive impact that the business has uh, with society and try to, as much as possible, minimize any negative impact that they might actually have. Uh, there is a slight distinction between ethics and social responsibility, although they are related. Uh, being ethical in your decision making within the business is going to help move towards being socially responsible, but social responsibility looks at the entire organizational activities and their impact on society instead of looking at individual decision making. And we move from social responsibility to actual business law. Business law, it's basically the regulations that govern the conduct of different businesses within an industry and within a territory. So obviously the laws within different countries are going to be different, even though they all refer to business law in, in what we are describing right now. So there are different rules and regulations. And if you're operating globally, this is something that obviously you should take into consideration. And also notice that business laws usually uh, reflect the received wisdom of a country. So usually when there is a negative situation or a crisis that it's actually triggered by some of these ethical concerns, we see laws that are trying to basically prevent this situation from occurring again. So here I have two examples of that that are discussed by the book, like Sarbanes, Oxley, and Dodd and Frank Act, which were passed both by Congress and trying to prevent uh, some of the difficulties that we had in the 21st century from being repeated. And again, the first one deals with basically securities fraud and try to basically make the penalties differ to make sure that and that doesn't occur again. And, and then the Dodd-Frank Act is basically trying to pre prevent uh, people getting deceptive uh, purchases because they don't understand complex financial products, okay? which trigger basically a lot of the difficulties that we have in the big recession of 2008. So, at the end of the day, the laws are the minimum uh, level when it comes down to uh, ethical behavior. You need to abide by the laws, but usually ethical standards are actually higher than the laws because a lot of these laws are lagging into when they actually get passed uh, relative to the behavior that we observe. So it takes usually years until we have new regulations that actually help businesses conduct in a more ethical manner. Also, laws could be outdated, and obviously, and there could be a law that is compelling you to do things that you might actually not ethically agree with. Okay, so, you know, we change these laws because we're trying to make them reflect what our values are in society overall. And a lot of the difficulties that we will have ethically will actually go away if people at least will know the laws that they actually need to abide by. And you're going to see this again mentioned when it comes down to global businesses where you're operating under different laws from the ones that you are used to. So let's try to organize hierarchically the different concepts that we have discussed so far. So we have at the absolute bottom of the pyramid, 
the economic responsibilities of the firm. And this is a fiduciary responsibility that uh, shareholders uh, impose on the firm, which is that the firm should be profitable, so you should try to basically make as much money as possible so that that money is actually returned to the owners of the firm. This is the basic responsibility of the firm. But then on top of that, it must do so, uh, abiding by all the legal uh, regulations, and all the laws and codes that exist in the territories where it actually operates. So basically, you need to make as much money as possible, but essentially playing by the rules of the game. Okay. Then on top of this, we have ethical responsibilities, which, like I mentioned, go beyond legal aspects. So you need to do what's right, not just what is legally correct. Sometimes the law allows businesses to operate in a way that may not actually be considered fair or that may not be considered good for society. Okay. And then at the end of the day, not only you need to operate responsibly from an ethical perspective, but you need to try to be a good corporate citizen, which essentially means you need to be socially responsible and try to maximize the positive impact that the firm has to society and minimize any of its harms. So this is the hierarchy of the concepts that we have discussed. Now, what kind of ethical issues or disputes or decisions are we going to have within businesses? Well, there are going to be many, but essentially an ethical issue is some sort of decision that makes somebody choose between multiple option, actions that may actually be considered to be right or wrong or good or evil by either the individual or the corporation. So that's what we're going to call an ethical issue is when you have this uh, choice to make and there are some repercussions from the choice. Okay, so let's discuss some of the typical ethical issues that firms are going to face. The first one is bribery. And this is more prevalent maybe in other countries than in the United States, although you can still find cases of bribery in the United States. But the moment that you actually go global and you go into other markets, you will see that bribery, it's a lot more commonplace. And bribery is essentially getting a payment so that you could actually uh, undertake a decision that will be favorable to the party that is giving you the money or the funds. And by the way, it could also be a gift. It doesn't have to be necessarily a monetary thing. It could actually be a very expensive watch or it could be an expensive car, or it could be uh, uh, something else that will actually be considered uh, a payment. It doesn't have to be necessarily be monetary. Um, so, like I mentioned before, bribery is very commonplace in some countries, like if you go to some uh, South American countries, uh, bribery cases uh, are everywhere. In fact, you will encounter them even if you are just a regular citizen, but if you're talking about big decisions that are made for big business, uh, this idea that you need to grease the wheel so that it actually, uh, things get happen or things get done, uh, it's actually very commonplace. It is definitely legal in the United States, but you're gonna see how globally uh, you're gonna face this decision more times than you will care to. Now, here you have the most prevalent ethical issues that companies face in the United States. And this is as of 2018. So as you can see, uh, this is a survey that was conducted uh, asking managers about the kind of behaviors that they have experienced or observed. And you can see that 47% of the people have observed at least some misconduct. So that's about roughly half, obviously. So ethical uh, misconduct uh, and ethical issues seem to be very commonplace. The most commonly observed uh, misconduct or issue is abusive behavior, which I will discuss later. You can also see that um, the people that actually observed the behavior reported in almost 70% of the cases. Uh, so for the most part, it seems like 
at least the respondents to the questionnaire seem to be fairly honest so when they see something that it's problematic they actually report on it but you can also see and this is why it's you know ethical issues are important and you can see that even though most people tend to report it also about half of them uh, almost half of them uh, get some retaliation from actually reporting so this means that ethical issues can be difficult because not only the decision may be difficult but there might be repercussions from doing the right thing or what you, you consider to be right and um, so what kind of other issues other than bribery uh, are you going to observe in businesses like we mentioned uh, other issues might actually seem smaller. One of very one of the very common issues is this idea of misuse of company time, when you actually see people uh, doing other things uh, instead of working. So you will see people on their smartphones just you know, posting something on Facebook, or people just chit chatting instead of working. That is considered misuse of company time, and you know it's something that companies are trying to deal with because it creates a lot of waste and it decreases the productivity of it. Another ethical issue that is very prevalent, in fact, the most prevalent is abusive and intimidating behavior. And this includes a wide range of actions from the most grave ones, which are physical threats, and some of which obviously, and some people might even carry forward. And then it goes from being an ethical issue to being a criminal case and to just things like spreading uh, false rumors about people, uh, talking in a disrespectful manner, using things like profanity, insults, yelling, or it could be as subtle as just ignoring someone at work. Um, all these cases can actually create a very negative environment within the workplace uh, for obvious reasons. And they create a big challenge and how to manage within the organization if you are the manager that has people that are behaving like this. And if you are of the teleological school of thought, you should just consider the intent of the motivation behind all these actions that you are actually observing. The difficulty with the intent is that obviously only the person that is engaging in the behavior knows the actual intent behind it. So this consideration can actually be difficult to ascertain sometimes. And we observe different types of bullying in the workplace. I'm going to show you now a chart. Now here you can see the most typical behaviors that are associated with bullies in the workplace. And, you know, from starting from the lighter version, which will be spreading the rumors to uh, insults, uh, falling, uh, not communicating, yeah, use sending emails uh, to other uh, workmates about the person uh, that you're trying to bully and defaming them, etc. So there's a lot of negative uh, behaviors associated with bullies at work, and this is a prevalent problem uh, within companies. Another ethical issue that is commonly addressed by companies and they encounter uh, many times is this idea of misuse of company resources. So starting from small things like using the computer that the company has assigned you for work for personal use. So for example, to send emails or check uh, your credit card uh, balance or maybe make a purchase online for personal use. To other equipment like maybe using the copier that it's at the office so that you can make copies for something personal to maybe a more damaging situations like charging personal expenses on company reports and this is something that tends to occur as you move up the organization because you have more leeway to add expenses, whereas if you're talking about a line worker, they probably don't have this opportunity. There is an example of this in Spanish business where there are several people in jail right now who were part of some of the big financial institutions in Spain that had these black credit cards that were basically not in the books, that were part of their compensation scheme, and they were supposed to be used just for expenses related to business but people were charging uh, 
hundreds of thousands of dollars of all sort of expenses for personal use and now they are actually in jail for that uh, now what's happening with a lot of the companies because this is uh, a problem in many firms is that they are establishing policies that basically will give you guidelines to employees as to what is acceptable use so they might tell you that for example you can use the copier to make 10 copies uh, of whatever you want to do for personal use a month uh, or you can spend five minutes in personal emails uh, a day so they are going to give you some guidelines as to what is considered acceptable because they know that this is going to happen one way or the other it's very hard to monitor and and make sure that it have, doesn't happen 100 percent of the time so they will just give you a guidelines of what's acceptable and if you go beyond that that's when you could potentially get in trouble Another important ethical issue that I want to discuss is this idea of conflict of interest. This is what happens when you're stuck between advancing your own personal interest, whether financial or otherwise, and those of the firm. And this is something that can actually happen under different situations. So, for example, uh, let's, let's pick a simple example. Imagine that you work as a plumber for uh, a plumbing company, and let's say a uh, uh, heating and air conditioning company that you know pays your regular salary and uh, but on the weekends maybe you have a small business that you're running which is basically you are doing your own plumbing uh, services uh, on the weekends when you have some time because you don't work for your uh, plumbing company so in that situation uh, if you are giving your business card uh, to the clients that are actually going through the company that uh, you you are working for that will be a conflict of interest because you are basically using the business uh, to gain your own clientele on the side and that will actually put in conflict uh, your personal interest and those of the firm because those people will potentially go and ask for your services uh, in the future instead of actually routing those services through the firm right so that will be a simple example of a conflict of interest and um, now to avoid this situation the most important thing you can do is you can separate your personal financial dealings with those of the business so there's just no no reason or no need to be in that difficult spot of whether you actually uh, do one or the other and one related issue that it's illegal and uh, you could actually end up in jail for is this idea of insider trading so insider trading is basically when you buy or sell stock because you have knowledge that is still not public about something that is going to happen with the firm that it's so important that it could potentially increase or decrease of its stock price and there are multiple people that have come in trouble for this and the FCC pursues insider trading really harshly because it has huge implications for financial markets now fairness and honesty are particularly important aspects when it comes down to ethics for obvious reasons uh, fairness is ingrained in our nature uh, we have you can say an instinct for fairness and you can see this in animals as well I will post a link in the description of this video to another YouTube video where you can see capuchin monkeys when they are treated unfairly by giving them different foods how they react to this unfairness and you can see the reaction is very strong and it's almost comical at least for me to think about animals behaving like this but we know humans do the same thing people feel like it's a big deal when they are treated differently than others that are in a similar situation we can see that when it comes down to wages people being paid at different amounts within the organization for similar work it's something that has been making the rounds in the news and another important aspect other than fairness is this idea of honesty right so we need to be transparent and we need to tell the truth and you can see that a lot of the aspects dealing with honesty are about communication between the firm and consumers so you can see uh, for example this in advertising right where you will get a advertising for uh, from a dealer for cars for example that will tell you that you can buy the car for let's say you know 19.999 right with certain level of equipment and when you get to the dealership with the commercial in your hand 
uh, they will tell you that unfortunately that uh, model has already been sold and because of that uh, they cannot sell you that same model at the same price but they have another one that is a little bit more expensive with that equipment and maybe a couple more things and this is called bait and switch or misleading uh, advertising and it's definitely illegal in the united states but doesn't mean companies don't engage in it in fact you can find companies that will have the same ad week over week over week with the same uh, serial number for the car and when you go to the dealership that car is not there and they're not supposed to do it that doesn't mean they don't and that will be an honesty lapse right and the same thing happens with personal selling and you will go to the same car dealership and there are many tactics that uh, ruthless uh, salespeople will actually employ one of them will be asking you if I could get you a car for a certain price, will you buy it? And the salesperson knows that he cannot get you the car for that price, but they are putting you into this what if scenario so that you actually answer yes. And once that you have committed yourself to buying the car at a certain price, the salesperson know that they can wiggle your uh, resolve uh, from saying yes to a certain price to maybe slightly increasing that price and because of that being able to sell the product to you that is a personal tactic that it's deceptive and it sh probably shouldn't be used and there are many other high sales pressure tactics that are actually used and other issues with product labeling right so not having uh, labels that describe what's in the product or if it's what's in the product is inadequately or improperly uh, labeled uh, other aspects and important things that deal with honesty uh, company secrets so oftentimes when you're dealing with a company or work for a company you might actually have non-disclosure agreements signed so you're not supposed to tell people about the issues that go on when it comes down to company assets because oftentimes people can learn from that they can copy stuff and they could actually have big ramifications for the profitability of the company so you are bound to keep company secrets and etc you can also see this uh, when you move to a global environment because there is a lot of push for coping a uh, intellectual property so you have issues of plagiarism and companies that are just trying to learn about how Others are able to do things at any cost through bribery and etc. So now that we have outlined the different ethical issues that people are going to face, at least some of them within companies, the question is how do you go about making more ethical uh, decisions? Well, the first step for that is make sure you know the law. So for any decision that you're going to make, within a company you need to understand and have a clear sense as to what is legal and illegal within that industry so make sure that you have a basic understanding at least of the laws that govern the industry so that you don't actually break the law and because of that end up in trouble that is the minimum level then beyond that what you need to do is you need to understand the code of ethics within the organization the code of ethics is a very important tool that is actually used by the company to try to align the decision making ethical decision making within uh, the firm uh, between the individuals and the values that actually the firm uh, displays so it's trying to standardize or give guidelines to employees as to what ethical behavior is and how it actually looks like so uh, companies should have a code of ethics and if your company does have one make sure that you read it carefully and that you understand what it entails for the decisions you're going to have to make then after you've gone through the code of ethics uh, is the kind of behavior that you are considering typically in your industry right is it something that everybody is doing already and if it's not what could happen if people actually find out that you are doing it even though it might be legal and it might be within the code of ethics but it's actually not acceptable within the industry this could actually pose a problem for you okay next what about your core workers not just the industry in general what do they think about what you're considering doing? In fact, a good test to know whether 
what you're about to do is ethical or not is will you be willing to discuss your decision with other colleagues if the answer is no because you are worried that they will find out that probably means that what you're about to do is actually unethical regardless of what the law and the code of ethics says okay and then the last step and maybe the most important one is how do you feel about it you know how does it match uh, the decision you're going to make with your own values we get our own beliefs and values still pretty early on in life and at the end of the day we need to live with the consequences of the decisions we make so because of that this is probably the most important of all the questions so how do you improve the ethical behavior of businesses other than consider all those questions that i mentioned well look at the three key factors that determine uh, what unethical behavior lapses are within companies so first you start with individuals this is basically making sure that the people that you're hiring are actually of solid uh, solid moral ground and so this has to do a lot with your uh, acquisition of talent within the firm so making sure that the people that you're hiring are not only technically competent but actually uh, they are moral as well uh, you can actually ask uh, scenario questions uh, within your uh, selection process to make sure that the people that you actually get uh, in the business and you hire for your business are actually of solid uh, solid moral standing right then other than that what is the influence that managers and co-workers actually have so this is a function of the culture within the organization so is the business culture that of ethical decision making or are others within the organization making unethical uh, decisions and this is widely established and accepted that's the case obviously and uh, chances are individual behavior is going to lean in that direction so it's not only about how the individual is, but also how the culture and the organization is set by managers and co-workers. And then finally, don't allow for an opportunity to have an unethical uh, decision. And how do you do that? By having an ethical code within the organization and having compliance requirements. So make sure that you write an ethical code uh, that enables uh, managers to have a very clear idea about what is okay uh, to do within the organization and what is not okay and then uh, have compliance requirements so that actually the code is enforced within the organization otherwise uh, it actually doesn't help you much so like i was mentioning in the previous slide a code of ethics or a code of conduct is particularly essential within an organization as a tool that is going to enable a lot of this more positive ethical decision making happening within the organization so what does the ethical uh, code uh, do for the business well first is it basically gives a heads up to the employees as to what kind of areas are they going to have to deal with or difficulties from a decision making perspective so if you have thought about it ahead of time about what you will do in you if you were in a particularly difficult situation when you have to face some of these ethical questions and uh, you might actually make a better decision because you've thought about it ahead of time okay also uh, it gives a clear guidance to employees and managers as to what the values are or we're striving to be within the organization it could be things like integrity transparency honesty and fairness for example right? and so that you know it sets the standard for your employees. It also gives guidance as to what to do in the case of ambiguous situations. So for example, uh, what happens if you are involved into the hiring uh, process within the organization and you know that one of your friends is actually, um, one of your friends is applying for one of the positions that you know, you're aware of. So in that situation, what do you do? Is it okay to put on a good word for your friend? That's probably an ethical thing to do. But what happens when you go from putting out a good word to exaggerating or talking excessively about this person because you're trying to influence some of your peers that are actually going to be involved in that decision making? That starts getting into a gray area. Of course, we all agree that lying about the person and their skills, it's unethical, but there is a gray area in there. So if you have some guidance as to what you can and you cannot do within the organization that might actually 
make those gray or ambish, uh, ambiguous areas uh, less and hopefully improve your ethical decision making. And also, uh, what the Code of Ethics will do is it will tell you how to report any misconduct that you actually observe. So it will create some ways for systematically reporting uh, potential lapses or difficulty. And this is actually a good thing because that will uh, clarify what the employee should do in case uh, of a problem so that you can actually improve as a business when it comes down to the ethical decision making. And uh, it also provides a, a shared approach to dealing with ethical issues so that you know you can use it as a training tool to make sure that as much as possible you create that culture that it's actually ethical within the organization. It also helps communicate into the different publics that the organization deals with. So that way your customers, your suppliers, and maybe the government will actually know exactly what the company values and what it stands for when it comes down to decision making. And finally, uh, it's a tool that helps us get some feedback and maybe improve from the ethical lapses that we might actually connect.